Victory is mine. Come on, victory today. And what's another one that's in the same tempo? In the morning when I rise. Uh -huh. In the morning. Come on, uh huh. Uh -huh. When I rise. What's that going? Um, in the name of. We said that when I read oh, you my. Did that. Uh, okay. uh, uh, uh. See, that's the difference <laughs> in the mother and daughter. See what I'm saying? So the icebreaker is: we want you to come up with your good old Kojic song with the words. So say me and mommy's word was cookies, and we say. I need my cookies. Give me my cookies and milk. I need my cookies. Give me my cookies and oh, give me my cookies. Give me my cookies and oh, I need my cookies. Give me my cookies. Now let's just say, let's say cookies, cookies, cookies. <laughs> give me chocolate chip. <laughs> give me oatmeal raisin. <laughs> Man, Uh, the milk. Two percent. Uh, uh, uh oh, give me two percent. <laughs> oh, give me whole milk. <laughs> give me all milk. All milk. Or almond milk. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Y'all see how the whole congregation, we just all caught on because that is a part of our history. So we want some ladies to join us and we're going to give you some words. Y'all ready for the words? Okay, money and white. I, the reason why I thought about money is because I, I declared wealth in this room, amen. <laughs> and I was getting ready to say consecrated, but I wanted to give another word, so I thought of white. We wear white on first Sunday, amen. Did y'all enjoy Pentecost Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we had some church. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, we had some church. <laughs> I couldn't run because I was pregnant and I had... Um, a uh, superwoman over here keeping her eyes on me, making sure I didn't move. So let's praise the Lord for our leaders one more time. Okay. So white and white and, um, what did I say? White money. And, money. and money. Okay. Okay, 60 seconds, Dr. Luana said. You all have 60 seconds to come up with your rendition and the world renowned <laughs> are going to judge your song. Y'all ready? Oh, there should be a, a clock on the screen. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Uh, you all can converse. Get your song together. Oh, I'm, get it together right where you are. Oh, over here. So let's do uh, white over there and money over here. Money over here, white over here. So money, your word is money. Money, come up with a song with money, what I said, and your money. word is white. I, I, okay, we said money, white, money, white, money, white, money, white. All right. And we gonna judge together.
Because right. it was just too good. All right, we're going to money really quick. Money, let's go. God's gonna bless you with the money. God's gonna bless you with the money. God's gonna bless you with the money today. All right. Give your tithes and your offering and watch God. She done made up a song for real. She got it. to the conversation. I just love the fact that you all are fun. Amen. Yes. How many know that it's a joy to laugh in the Holy Ghost? Yes. 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 And so we're going to get to the mother and daughter questions, but before we do, both of you all walk in tremendous, tremendous grace. And so share with us um, 
the grace that God has given you, number one, to be the wife of the presiding bishop and then the daughter of the presiding bishop. Share with us how God has just graced you with the mantle to operate in that role. I believe that uh, the most uh, wonderful thing that God has uh, given to me um, is having a mother who, who was so exemplary, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark. And I think, thank you. And to um, have such an amazing mother who walked the walk of righteousness and along with what she was um, so exemplary in teaching us uh, the way of righteousness. And she was living right in front of us. And I believe that's how God, she taught us how to not take advantage of God's grace because he gives you opportunity after opportunity uh, to uh, go to him, even in our, we're not perfect, but he gives us opportunity. And that's what my mother taught. And I think that's what really helped us. And uh, excuse me, Dr. Grant, but I want to honor you. Yes. Take this time and thank you yes. for having us and making this easy for us. Yes. So that's my answer. And Yes, I honor you too, Dr. Luana. Um, I would say it's mommy passing those same lessons down to me. I do think um, being a pastor's kid was my internship. <laughs> and it was a good internship because I had mom and dad on my head. Like, you have to understand that you not only represent yourself, but you represent the father, and then you represent where you come from. Um, so there are some sacrifices that I've been taught that I have to make, um, which they pay off. It's a part of the commitment. And um, I'm glad that I have had parents to instill in me uh, the essence and the value of commitment because uh, there's so many people around now who have no boundaries. And unfortunately, we lose so much that God has given us because we don't have integrity. So um, I think that, that those lessons that have been pounded in me. I mean, you know, uh, I remember when I colored my hair and I had like a blonde streak going down the middle of my head. And my Nana said, girl, you look like a skunk. <laughs> Color your hair, get rid of the blonde. And you know, when I was young, I used to think my family were, you know, just always fussing at me. But now that I'm older, I'm like, no, I had a lot to lose. I had a lot at stake. So it wasn't just ministry that they were preparing me for or for this space, which is supportive of my father and my mother, um, but it's also dedication to the saints. It's, it's a part of being a martyr for Christ. So, yeah. Wow, you said something so powerful. Yes, amen, let's clap for that. Thank you. You said something so powerful when you talked about walking in grace. And as you, re as you all reflect on just your mother-daughter relationship, how important is it for moms to give daughters the grace? Because we don't get it right as daughters all the time, right? And then as a, as a mother, you, you know, having your mother, Kiera, how is it, um, how important is it for you to give your mom grace? Because there's no manual that yeah. mothers or daughters have. Yeah. So how important that it, is it that we give each other grace as we grow? <laughs> as a mother, I think it's very important um, to give them room, give them space. They will make mistakes. That's a part of growing pains. Um, I, I uh, learned that, you know, even though, you know, she, she, res she respects me, I mean, wonderfully. Um, but when I lay my foot down, she'll, she'll know, oh, mom ain't playing. So we cannot, I can't go to the party with her and then try to be mama at the same time. I can't drop it like it's hot at, with her and then try to be an example. So it's very important that as a mother, that you give them space. I think that one good thing that I learned as being a mother um, is that uh, I have conversations with her. I don't always talk all the time. I want to hear from her. And I think that's where we make a mistake. Let me hear your heart. Even if it's something that I wanted to leave it open for her to be comfortable to tell me what she's battling with. Because I think it's so, uh, it's so prevalent today is that the, the daughters or sons are afraid. Sometimes we, I was afraid to talk to my mother because she was so stern. Everybody knew, Maddie Mouse Clark and that's you. You knew about her. <laughs> But um, she still allowed 
you know, uh, an open door for me to become comfortable. So I think that's very important is that we have be open minded as opposed to just being so stern, but yet letting them know don't cross the line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, I think the question for me is why should we extend grace to our mothers? Yeah, yes. as daughters. Um, I think we should extend grace to our mothers because they're human. They're figuring it out too. Day by day, every day is a new journey for them. And um, I think that we should even acknowledge and honor that they are doing the best that they can. Um, not just that, but you have sometimes where you have some mothers who have experienced different motherhood from their mother, and they're like, I don't want to do it that way, I want to do it this way. And they may be deflecting in a way to try not to carry certain traumas down. And so I think we, as we grow and mature, we have to psychologically or emotionally, uh, we call it emotional intelligence, but growing in that space to where we don't react to some of the correction that they may give us, but actually hear the heart of them. Um, and then say, Mommy, uh, you said you said my breath stank, but maybe you could have just slipped me a mint or yeah, something, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, so I think there's a way to find joy in the relationship with your mother because at the same time, you are her seed. So there are many similarities. There might be more, I think, with my mother and I. There are far more similarities that I have with her than differences. If I can be transparent, she's probably going to get me after this. But I used to tease my mom about whispering. I would hear her saying, you know, just Jesus or the Lord talk. She's just talking to herself. And I say, Mommy, why are you talking to yourself? You're weird. And she was like, Girl, you crazy if you don't talk to yourself. I'm over here praying and telling myself to hold on. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so after a while, now that I'm in my 30s and I'm married and, you know, I got to act right with different people and, you know, consider the people factor and children are coming, and I've, you know, been in my mind about some things. Now I find myself whispering, Lord, keep me Jesus, <laughs> Lord. And, you know, sometimes I'll put my AirPod in my ear right. so people won't think I'm talking to myself. You said what now? <laughs> so I, I think that is very important because I start learning. I see my mom in my days, even the crumbs that are in the bottom of her purse. I used to tease her about that. <laughs> and say, Mommy, you got too many crumbs in the bottom of your purse. Now I got crumbs from Biscoff cookies in my purse. I might even have a greasy napkin down there. I'm juicy, so <laughs> praise. But yes, I, I, I think that is very important so that you can grow together and then it evolves into friendship, which is beautiful. My mother is my, that's my road G. I can't call her my road dog, but that's my homie. <laughs> so I think it can grow into a blessing. So keeping that open door policy where mothers and daughters can have genuine conversations. Now, during those conversations, sometimes mothers and daughters experience conflict, right? Um, some mothers may have one perspective while a daughter thinks another way. So how do we handle conflict in those relationships when the daughter wants to do it her way and the mother thinks that the daughter should do it another way or vice versa? So how do we handle conflict? Well, um, when we have conflict, um, I think with us, it's, it's important that I stay and remain in my role as a mother. And I give my take of it, and then she'll give her take of it. And I'll tell her, I'm standing on what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not moving. And then... Along with, we already know how to pray. And then a lot of times, I'll agree to disagree with my daughter, but just hear her out. And then I'll try to come up with a way. I'll pray and I say, Lord, let's come up with a way where it won't destroy the relationship, mm -hmm. which is happening today. Yeah. What can we do to come together? Even though you have some mothers, they're, they're tapping into so much of this crazy stuff that the world is offering. They're offering a lot mm -hmm. to our children. But you have to have, tell God to give you a way to say, you know, um, I know she believes in this, but she got to know what I stand for. And you're going to respect me in, in the area of where I am and standing for. So I think that we need to just, you know, ask God. I mean, what, I, we've had conflict. I'm, yeah. we, we haven't been perfect. I mean, you know, we, we've had moments. I think <laughs> she tried to call me and I didn't answer. 
I was very quiet, and I think that was a way of me. I don't want to say anything that I, that will bother me or yeah, that, hurt that, me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I usually, I just come up with the ways to keep peace in the camp. But she's still going to get out what she needs to say. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to get out what, she's, what she needs to say. I think, uh, I agree with you, Mommy. I think, um, too, for me, one of the huge things that I've had to adapt is that you don't know it all. Yes, you're a growing adult, and yes, you've had a world of experiences, and yes, you're in a world where the culture gives you a lot more information that is way too easily accessible. Sometimes we've gotten some stuff that was prematurely accessible. Um, but the mother, the Bible says in the mall, I believe in God's word, so that might too be the difference with me as a daughter or with us as daughters in this room. But the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. So I have enjoyed being a student at heart. And I found that a lot of my friends have bumped their head a lot harder than I have because they simply didn't listen. So I enjoy listening. I enjoy having somebody who done bumped their head for me already. I don't gotta go down that road. You already went down there for me. You enjoy it, have a good God bless you. I'm gonna go this way. And so I go just lay enjoy. Down. Yeah, go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I think that is um, something that I've adapted, and I think that it's uh, beautiful too, you know, with just uh, motherhood and, and daughterhood, if I can say it that way, because um, my mother too has allowed me the freedom to make choices on my own. So it's sort of like uh, the, the parental consent that my parents have given me, or that even I'm sure a lot of our parents in the church have given us, is that they mirror what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit gives you conviction. They give you what the problem is, and then they give you a solution, whereas condemnation makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel like I should, if you think about condemnation, you almost want to, sometimes you've thought about, I keep saying it, I'm tired of myself. I've thought about suicide before. But if you have parents who are the saints, that's what makes the difference because then they don't transfer traumas. They don't, they have emotional intent. Or like you said, mom is praying, how should I deliver this so that it doesn't sting? And she don't remember in her 40s what mama said and she's holding it against me while we're talking and growing together. So I think that's where the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I, be, I believe when God gives you an answer through your parents, you'll get a kind of peace. Bible says, I'll give you peace. I'll, I'll give you stillness. I'll give you contentment. And it may be something that we don't want to hear, Bible says a fool uh, despises correction. And I have really seen that baby has been a fool because you didn't listen to mama. Mama's voice comes back up to me as if it's God using her voice as he did with, was it Samuel and Eli? Yeah. And so I think that's where I'm like, I've done enough mistakes on my own and made enough decisions. I'm gonna go ahead and listen to mama. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. This is good stuff. <laughs> We pray that you are writing these nuggets down. And that was so good what you all said to put space between the conflict. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes there are so many words that are said from the daughter to the mother, from the mother to daughters, to tear that relationship apart. And so for us to put space between the conflict and the response is so good. So when we come back after we have uh, handled the conflict, we know it's there, how important <clears throat> is it for us to say, I'm sorry, or should we say, I'm sorry? Now we know mothers tell the daughters, you better say, I'm sorry. Mm. But should mothers say, I'm sorry as well to daughters, first lady and Kiara? Absolutely. I think the mothers should show, you gotta have a forgiving heart and you have to know what your mistakes that you made, realize it. You have to be the example in from your mother. So yes, if I made a mistake, that's been many times. I apologize. When I, I know I was right, you know, we know we right because we mama and we went through experience. <laughs> you know, we know we right. But there's, because of what's happening today, I mean, it could be something like social media. I'm like, no, that's not the way I saw it on there. And she said, mom, now I said, no, it's not. She came back and said, let me show you, mama, it's like this. <laughs> And I said, I'm so sorry, Kiki, you're right. Because she is actually, it was a learning experience for me to tap into how we, I'm still mailing out stuff. You know, she emailing and te texting. So it's a learning experience. And I think, of course, we should have a forgiving heart along with uh, saying, I'm sorry, being willing to uh, own up to your mistakes. I agree, I, I agree. I feel like we have to, yeah, are we clapping? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
amazing. I agree. I think we should have um, say sorry. When my brother and I used to get in conflict, my parents would always say, all right, now, what did you do? Don't come tattling and telling. Let's also see what faults did you have in this matter. And then also just to uh, piggyback off of what you said, conflict, because I think resolving conflict is also accepting responsibility for something that you've done. It's a way of rehabilitation, which is also a way of deliverance in our church. We go to the Lord, we repent, and we say, Lord, I'm sorry. If you say, I'm sorry, and you repeat it, then it's like, you don't really mean what you said. So as mom said, practicing forgiveness as number one, as a believer, that's what makes the difference. I think relationships, period, are so much more easier when you're really trying to mirror Christ. When we're not trying to mirror Christ, we have a lot of hard time just letting stuff go or even sometimes taking the apology that we're never given. We hold on to stuff and then it becomes our issue because somebody ain't said sorry. No, I'm trying to make it into heaven with your sorry or not. So go ahead and do what you're going to do, you know. <laughs> but um, I think that... Uh, us, having, us saying sorry, it, it, it also is a way of personal development and self-awareness. Like some of us could, you know, know so much, but you could be so, have such a lack of self-awareness to where you didn't, the Bible talks about considering it all. Did you consider your behaviors? Did you think that that was going to affect somebody else? Do you think that it affected mama? Mama probably always in her mind about how she is raising you. The least you could do is sometimes reward and say, my, you did a good job, girl. You know? <laughs> So I think that, um, that that is what the Lord has convicted me on, which is celebrating our mothers, honoring them. And you asked too about, um, it was something you asked and, and what came to mind is if you don't honor your parents, your days will be short. So I see a lot of reality stars that call their mothers out of their names. And every time I watch them, I, 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 I feel like I sound like an old good church of God in Christ mother that's saying, baby, you just shorten your day. That day is off. That's day 19. That's cut off because you ain't right. You know, so I think that forgiveness has to do with that, being transparent, but knowing how to talk to people. I get so sick, I'm sorry. I get so sick of folk trying to just say what you want to say. The Bible says, yes, the truth will set you free, but who said the truth has to be brutal? Right. That's if it's going to set me free, then that means I'm going to move forward. I press for the mark toward the prize of the high calling through Jesus Christ. I'm reaching for a prize. I can't reach for the prize. Wound it. So you got to give me the truth so I can get it and my wings can't be clipped. So I think that that is a part of transparency and healing conversations such as sorry. Wow. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, let's just practice that whether your mother or your daughter is here because how many know that I'm sorry opens the door just for a healthy conversation for you to be free and for your relationship to be free. So just turn to the person sitting next to you and just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Turn to somebody else. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, practice it in the Holy yeah. Ghost. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, yeah. Dr. Grant, just to add, e even with spiritual mothers, we're including everyone, right? Yes, ma'am. So even with daughters that, we, that, that is very prevalent in the Church of God in Christ, we have spiritual mothers. And I think we need to be mindful that a lot of our new generation that I am embracing, the ones that sincerely want to come to church and dedicate their lives to Christ, I think it's very important that we embrace them as we're not just talking about mother and daughter biologically, but spiritual mothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to be mindful of that and embrace them and let them know. I mean, they'll come, they'll do something in church. That's because they haven't been taught. I had to realize that. We've been taught. We've been raised in this thing. They're just coming. In. Some of them are leaving their parents at home. Their parents are dropping them off at church. This is what I realized. Their parents are dropping them off at church. If they come in dressed a little, a, a little different and got on her hot and fluty, fluty pants, I come to her. I said, baby, let's go shopping. Yes. <laughs> So with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Yes. If I take her shopping, I'm going to say, girl, I'm going to buy you some. Uh, go, let's go to Saks Fifth Avenue and get you a bad dress. I'm going to go. I, I, I'll go with you. <laughs> but there's ways. My point is there are ways that you can, you know, offer your kindness and showing them without, you know, ah, being so stern. Can I add, Dr. Luana, a fun experience? Um, you can have a mother-like experience with your aunt. Um, shout out to my Auntie Jackie. 
All of us know that little raspy, growly voice, she gon' fuss. But it's some good fussing that's good for your soul. <laughs> you know how we eat some foods, and it may not taste good to us, but it actually has medicinal purposes. It actually has nutritional value. Um, so that's one experience that I can relate to with what you're saying. And then, um, turns out, a good old church mother at my church, I'll never forget it. I used to wear that brown lip liner around my lips, and I would mush it in. It almost like I had black lip gloss on. And the mother came up to me and she said, baby, that lip don't match your future. I said, <laughs> I, 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 I said, no, nah, what not? She said, it looks, a, it looks a little dark. I ain't gonna say what she said, but it looks a little dark. And turns out that's my mother She said it looked like doo-doo. No, my... <laughs> My grandmother-in-law now. I had the longest attitude with her, but then I got another lesson from daddy, and then dad said, uh, Kiki, you can't wear every trend. Every trend is not for every leader. Yeah. And so it was like little pockets of conversations or confirmation that the Holy Spirit would drop into my life so that I wouldn't be mad at those mother-like experiences that I wasn't so okay with. And turns out, not that lady that said, that don't match your future, she in my life forever. You know? <laughs> I thought I wasn't gonna like her and that was gonna be the end of it, but she looking at me like, uh-huh, and I'm here. <laughs> so, I think we should continue to embrace those moments. I like to encourage a lot of my peers and even young women as well in our ministry that the village is not just for the child, it's for the adult too. So don't think that when you get in your teens and your 20s, you can just know it all. Bible says pride comes before the fall. You're going to fall and bust your head. You better listen to somebody. If your breath stank and they said your breath is hot, put something in your mouth. I'd rather you tell me. Mama tell me in a minute, baby, you need to quit whispering so hard. Your breath is a little hot. <laughs> Thank you, Mama, for telling me, because when I go talk to them, somebody's going to say, Kiera's breath was stinking. <laughs> It smell like she don't scrub that tongue nor the roof of that mouth. You know? Um, so I, I would, I just, I enjoy the village. It's a blessing to me. That's so good. That's so good. So good. So good. So good. Okay. I'm not Talking about the village, let's go to the question about serving in ministry. Um, so what should mothers know? Because First Lady, you are a very busy woman of God, and we celebrate the grace that God has on you to do it all. Come on, one more time. Let's clap for that. I mean, you walk in extreme grace. But as a mother and uh, raising children and you're in ministry, how do you keep your priorities, the priorities, the main thing? And then, Kiara, as a daughter in ministry, your parents are in ministry, you're in ministry as well. How do you find that balance between uh, ministry and being who you are? I believe it's uh, helpful to me in knowing each capacity. Talking about being a wife to my husband. I have a career, but I, I, many days, my daughter, she has mentioned it to me, that I'll put my career aside and I'll say I gotta support my husband and become the wife because I don't want him to look back and say, you know, regret she didn't support me when I supported her. And her husband never done that because I've always been, I, I, let go of myself, and I think it's very important that you become selfless. And when you become, so you can walk with excellence in each capacity. Mm -hmm. As a wife, as a mother, I learned to take out time. I'll tell my, my daughter and my son, stop whatever you're doing. It's time to have dinner, family time. We need to have family time. Now, my son has gotten it, so he'll call us. What y'all doing? You want to go to dinner? Mm -hmm. And he got it now. So it's something that they have become acclimated because they saw me walk in that capacity of a mother. So it's very important that you walk in those capacities with excellence so that when they become married, they know how to handle their husbands and know how to handle his, their wives. And, and, and I think it, what helped me is that in knowing that I pray, God, I want to do everything in excellence because they have a future ahead of them and they are watching me. So I want to watch my every walk. So I think that is very important. I, now, I will confess, 
Mama is sitting right in front of me right here. I will confess, I will be the great wife in other capacities, but that cooking, I can't get it right <laughs> like I should. <laughs> because of my career, oh, but I'll make up for it. On his birthday, I'll cook a big old dinner for him. Won't I? <laughs> yes, you will. You know, so it's just ways that you do things to make up because I feel guilty sometimes because I want to be in that, that excellent wife that God is calling for. My mama can cook, though, now. She, she, <laughs> she underestimates herself. That mac and cheese, especially that mac and cheese on the corner where you, you the, the, heat, the heat hit a little longer. Baby! Okay. Ain't that greedy? I'm the juicy one, so y'all pray my strength. I like to eat. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, um... I think it's so important, and I've been taught to Dr. Luana that um, our first ministry is our family. And, um, you know, I'm having a little pregnancy emotion, so bear with me if I start crying or something. But um, one of the things that rested with me after my grandparents left was um, that I gave them my time. I did not let the road keep me from spending time with my nana and papu. And um, I didn't, I used to feel guilty because I felt like, am I being lazy? You know, because I, I would cut it off or I would say, no, let me get a little later flight because I made a promise that I was going shopping with Nana. And um, mama would say, you know, once, um, I call it the upgrade. When the saints leave and they left, and they left right, I call it the upgrade on life. They didn't just die. They, they went to see Jesus. So, um, but I said all that when uh, my grandparents took the upgrade on life, Mom said, uh, Key, you don't have to feel guilty because you gave them their time. You gave them what, you know, you spent time with them. So to make a long story short, um, I make it a priority now. If mama got something going on, I'm canceling. I can't do it. And, and sometimes I feel guilty about calling people back. And then, too, that's a part of planning. God is a God of order, so you can't just call canceling everybody. You got to do things in order. So there are some things that I won't accept. And then even with dad, dad got to preach this Friday. Oh, I'm going to be here. I've got to be here for the bishop. I got to pray for him. Um, I got to pray for my mama. I got to go there to, you know, uh, Jacob just had a birthday, and he said, I, didn't, I haven't done anything fun for my birthday. I said, well, I'm going to take you to, because all Jacob want to do is church. I said, let's go to a water park or something. You're a child. So we took him to Kalahari, <laughs> and everybody was like, you didn't have to work on his birthday. I said, I did have to work, but I held the day uh, open because I wanted to, I promised Jacob that I would take him. Um, so I think it's very important because God forbid, if anything happens to any of our loved ones, the least you could do is say, I gave them my time. Wow. Woo! And you know, Dr., I'm gonna add this, just give me a few seconds. One thing that I will never forget what she did before her grandmother passed is that she said, Mom, I'm going to see Nana. She called off the plane. And valuable time is very important that we need to be aware of. And she said, Mom, I'm going to see Nana. She went to see Nana, and she went to the house, and all of a sudden, Nana was in the house in the room, right? Mm -hmm. And she was laying in the bed, and she was laying, and she said, no, what's wrong? This is not like you. It's talking about Mother Sheard. And she said, it's not like you. Get up, Nana. And Nana would put the, the spread back over, and Kiki would say, no, get up, Nana. Come on. Let's go to the hospital. Let's go. Let's get up and go. Let's get up and go. And that, when she made her get up and go to the hospital, that's when she found out she had COVID. That was so, the last day I saw her. That was the last. Auntie Gwenda was there. And Uncle Ethan's family was there. Was there. Absolutely. It wasn't nobody else. You know, it was family. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mom. No, you're fine. I was just making the point of having that valuable time because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Mm -hmm. You don't know when, when you're going to leave, a loved one's going to leave. That's just And me. can I add, Dr. Luana, I have these moments where I'm like, I wish Nana could have saw me get married. But Auntie Gwenda was standing right there, and my Nana, finally, she lifted up, because we were going back and forth, pulling her from the, the cover, saying, come on, get up. And finally, she got up, and she said, I just had a dream about you. And I said, I miss her so much. She said, I just had a dream about you. And I said, what was the dream, Nana? She said, you had on a beautiful white dress. And this was before I got married. And the Lord dealt with me and said, I deliver messages to the saints 
You don't think that they haven't seen it or they won't have a chance to see it, but they'll have a chance to see it. So the Lord dealt with my grandmother in that moment, and I have this, liber this liberty where I'm like, no, Nana knew I was going to get married. She knew I was going to have a man. And she met... <laughs> And she met my husband before she left. And then Papu, he married us, you know? So, um, and I had a dream years ago, um, and, and I, I talk too much, so that's it. But I, the, <laughs> the time, like mommy said, with your family, it's so necessary because God will allow you to have prophetic encounters and he'll remind you that nobody's missing anything that they should be miss they shouldn't be missing. I have you. So I, I really believe, I, re I really believe in the familial structure. I am who I am today because of my family. My first best friends were my family. And not just that, sometimes if I have disconnects with my immediate family or family in certain seasons, the, the family at the church, the true saints. Daddy taught me a difference between church folk and the saints. The saints yeah. seek the Lord. Yeah. The church folk, they just come to look cute. Yeah. But the saints, they are rolling the flow for you, them, and everybody else. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I'm a hush there. Yeah. Wow. So what you all have said basically is that family time is so much more important than you trying to be the evangelist on the road and accepting every engagement to be yes. with your family, right, to yes. be with your family. This is so good. Come on, one more time. Let's clap for our first lady. And Kiera, as we come to the end of our conversation um, on, on, this, uh, on this morning, can you all just share a brief word of encouragement, First Lady, to the mothers in the audience, um, and then Kiera, to the daughters, um, just from your personal experiences. And then if you all would just pray for us, uh, that mother and daughter relationships would just be strengthened, whether it's biological, whether it's spiritual. We know your testimony. There are some women in the audience, perhaps, that have they've lost children. And so let's just speak to the women of God, the mothers and the daughters, and then pray for us, please. What was the first question? <laughs> to give them to some words of encouragement. I'm sorry. Yes, That's a mother moment. <laughs> uh, words of encouragement to um, all of the mothers. And I salute all of the single mothers, all of the mothers who've had divorces. And all of them, I, I salute all of the mothers who come to this amazing convention and to have such a visionary leader so that you can go back home and teach your children and uh, have, take these nuggets. I encourage you, don't give up on your children. I know you see them sometimes in, in capacities of that. You didn't raise them that way, but I promise you, God will flip the script. He will flip the script because if you be faithful, I'm telling you, God will hear your prayer. I have watched you. You please know that I am a testimony because I remember when I used to testify, Lord, save my son, save my son. And now I, we see so much of a difference. We can't stop him from coming to church now nah, because he soaked in that anointing. And I'm telling you, I tell God, Lord, get that flesh out, get that flesh out, get that like a wash machine. And it's so, I promise you. So be encouraged mothers and know that that there is hope in getting on your knees and going to battle for Jesus for your children. Yes. Uh, I, as mothers are praying for us, I think that daughters, we should intercede on behalf of our mothers. Um, intercede that the Lord is removing inflammation, swelling, remove anything that would interfere with their cardiovascular system and pray, Father, how can I bring peace to my mother so that she can live long? How can I bring joy to my mother so that she can laugh again? Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we are an extension of them. And I would love to be a blessing to my parents before I'm a blessing to somebody else outside of my spouse or my children. But it's a blessing to be a part. So I would encourage you to know that you're not too young to tap into that level of discernment where the Lord will reveal to you what the generation before 
before you need, if I can say it that way. So I would encourage you, you can do it, girl. You can be the daughter, and you can also be the prayer warrior. Sometimes when mama can't get to Jesus, you can get her to Jesus. And so I just hope that you are encouraged. Um, not saying that mama ain't been able to get, because she can get to him. I, sometimes she's in, on, in at him on my behalf, because I, I kind of lose my mind sometimes, praise God. But um, don't nobody else in here lose your mind a little bit, just get a little strange. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm the only one. They said, no, baby, you're the only one. Okay, praise God. (laughs) Um, So I would just encourage the the daughters to stay encouraged and to have that friendship, that relationship with your mother. You want us to pray? Okay. Okay, just go. You want us to stand? If everyone could stand. Let's just stand. Our first lady and Kira is going to pray for mother and daughter relationships. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for this time. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. This time of this gathering, God, to glorify you in sharing with mothers and daughters. Father, we pray, God, that anything that's within us that will hinder us from being that excellent wife that you created us to be, remove it right now. Father, in order for us to get answers to you, we got to be cleaned out ourselves first. So, God, we say yes to you. We yield to you. We yield anything, God. I pray for wisdom, God. Give us the wisdom. Hallelujah. How to deal with our children. We need wisdom, God. How to deal with the new generation, God. Give us wisdom, Father. I bind Satan on every hand. Hallelujah. That tries to come against mother and daughters and even fathers and sons. God, we bind it right now. In the name of Jesus, every attack, we shut it down right now. We plead the blood of Jesus. I speak peace in relationships. I speak peace in the mother's hands. I speak peace in the mind. Oh, we glorify you, God, because you are still the hope of glory. You are still the hope, God, that we rest on and lean on. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you in the yes, name God, of Jesus. Yes, God, and we thank you for peace, God. We thank you for reconciliation. We thank you for restoration. God, we thank you for rejuvenation, God. We declare, Father, that you are rekindling the fire. You're rekindling the passion. God, you're giving us new strategies, new ways of communication. You're giving us emotional intelligence, Father. You're allowing us to know what to pray for. And God, we ask right now, Father, that you use your supernatural power to cover our families in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against darkness. We come against every scheme of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, you are defeated. God, go there to our homes right now in every corner, in every attic, in the basement. Fill the home with your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against sickness on our mothers in the name of Jesus. We declare long life in the name of Jesus. We declare good health. God, I declare right now by the mighty name of Jesus, your resurrecting power and your miracle signs and wonders are alive and well in our homes. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you're bringing our sons back. You're bringing our daughters back. You're bringing our spouses back. You're bringing our marriages together. We speak the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Devil, you will not reign in our homes. You will not reign in our wombs. I come against infertility in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will carry. You will carry the baby. You will carry the dream. You will carry peace. You will carry wisdom. You will carry innovation. You will carry prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, we won't back down in the name of Jesus. Satan, we won't break down. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Our strength to do God's work in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You said there's power of life and death in our tongue. We speak deliverance to our children. We speak protection to our children. We speak protection to our mothers. We speak protection to our fathers. In the name of Jesus, we come against any malformation, any malfunctions, any interruption. We curse the hand of depression in the name of Jesus. We curse the hand of anxiety in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak integrity to our bodies in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you the glory. We give you the glory. God, we give you the glory. Write and pour out your spirit, Father. Pour out your spirit, Father. God, send the fire. Refine, God. Refine it, God. Burn up what's wrong. Hallelujah. And God, we thank you, God. 
You said if we make our petitions known, God, you grant us our desires. Hallelujah, and we thank you and we praise you. We give you the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah! about the motherhood that you're getting ready to embrace. Come on, one more time, let's celebrate our beautiful first lady and her daughter. And ladies, keep your seats because we have a special treat for you. There's a mother and daughter duet that's coming.